Hey folks, my name is Dave. Welcome to our shop here at NTD Racing where today it is out with the old and in with the new as we are taking the Crossfire Pro out of the workshop and making space for the new XR. I'll tell you what, it was difficult cleaning up that Crossfire Pro for the last time, especially considering that I spent the last year and a half using it to build Honcho, our Folds of Honor desert race truck. But don't worry, it is going to a good home in another one of our team members' garages. We are putting the XR into the main garage here so that we can take advantage of its expanded cut area. Before we get into the boxes and see what's included with the XR, I will ask that if you like what you see here, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button and leaving a comment. And with that, if you have a comment or a question or something like that, ask it soon and I will make sure to answer inside the comments or I'll do it on the next video to make sure that everybody can benefit from the question. Lastly, if you are interested in the XR or you're like, you know what, I'm good with the Crossfire Pro, that's enough space for me, both very capable tables, there's a link in the description below. There's also a link at www.ntdracing.com and you'll get a discount at least on the Crossfire Pro for now and maybe the XR sometime in the future. Let's go ahead and see what we get inside the XR boxes. Okay. All right, well, the guy who just delivered these literally dropped both boxes right in front of me. This one, he dropped off that pallet, and then this one, he dropped and then fell completely off of his own truck. Such a clown. Anyway, let's go ahead and open these boxes up and see. Hopefully, there's no damage inside. I think Lamer Systems did a really good job of packing these, so I'm pretty confident we won't find any damage inside, but let's go ahead and check them out. Well, I, this was something I didn't expect, but actually taking the boxes apart was a task, and um, there was a little bit of a learning curve uh, to this. So the, the pieces of metal kind of You'll, you'll see it when you get one if you get the table. But they they kind of go up through a piece of metal. And they fold over this little tongue. And I had to get a chisel in there and pop that thing out, pry it up, and then get a pair of pliers and pry them vertically. And then I could just rip the top of the box off at that point. But it was a, a little bit of a learning curve there. And then now i got to figure out how I'm going to throw away all, this, all the boxes and all the parts. But it was fun to uh, take all of the parts out of the box and organize everything. Uh, everything came out really nice and clean and really, really well packed. Okay, let's get started. We got all the boxes out and I'm not going to throw the boxes away just yet, just in case I got to search back in there and make sure there wasn't a hidden piece inside there. Anyways, let's start by taking a look at the water table. I have it just roughly laid out on the floor. It looks good. It almost looks like a powder coated type of um, steel table here and you can see this one inch square tube over the edge, which really is going to give that a lot more rigidity and the ability to slide metal up onto your plasma table. Let's go ahead and look at the other parts. So what I try to do is organize my shop and lay everything out in the order that I think it's going to be put together. So I have the ends of the structure of the table over here, and these things are bolted together as they're shipped and they'll need to be unbolted. But all those other parts are just laid out, I think, about in the place that they're going to be when we start putting them together. Of all the things that were shipped, there was zero damage except this piece right here, which was in the long box, did get a couple scratches on that. Besides that, I'll put that on the back. The other one is just fine. That'll be the front side and, uh, and it'll look fine. So uh, besides that, everything else came out really nicely. A word of caution is that in some of the things you have lead screws. So in these uh, members right here, there was a lead screw. And then also in these side rails over here, and I think that these are the things that held up the shipment. These are the parts that came from Mexico, the, the tubes that uh, the the gantry slides up and down, but inside those were the lead screws. So just want to be careful as you're taking those things out such that the lead screws don't slide out and you bend one or something like that. Morale would be pretty low. Besides that, some other nice just details, all the, you got all the slats over here. You got all the guides that for the cable management system uh, over here, a bunch of really nice bracketry. And then here is the really cool stuff. All the different parts that were in the small boxes. I really like these. These are the sides of the gantry and they are beefy. This is solid steel or solid metal. I haven't put a magnet on it yet though. It looks like it might be an aluminum with an, uh, some kind of an anodized coating on this, the side. Half inch thick with some machining parts over here to make sure you line up everything just perfectly. Some really neat beefy parts. Can't wait to get the, put these things on. Besides that, a lot of brackets and you can recognize these from just going through the instructions and you know what they are. But again, you know, about one half inch thick on these, some really beefy parts. Some other nice brackets, some anodized pieces here, which will be holding your machine torch. You have the controller for the entire system over here. This is the x-axis a uh, whole bit obviously a whole bunch of 
mechanics on that. We'll get that thing uh, hopefully on there within the next couple hours as we start putting this thing to, uh, together and we'll get a video of that. You have the computer that comes with the monitor. I really do like this pennant. I think that's pretty cool. I'm glad it isn't really big and it's kind of small. You can almost put it in your pocket, walk around the shop uh, with that. Thank you for having a no kidding real uh, can of adhesive that they sent us to put the water table together. A couple uh, just cables there. This is what uh, sends the signal to your plasma cutter for the torch height control. Exactly the same thing that we used in the Crossfire Pro and it worked perfectly. This is one of the other things that I really like about Langmuir Systems and that is the organization with all the fasteners. There's no doubt where you have to go. I have them laid out here and there's, it starts over here bag one and it goes all the way over here to bag 44. And so as you're working, you're like, oh, I need to get bag number 20 for whatever. Boom, there's bag 20. I can take it right over to the part I'm working on. And usually what I'll do is I'll bring the empty bag back and I'll put the empty bag here to make sure that at the end that I've used all the bags and I don't lose those things. So super nice. Can't wait to get this thing uh, together. I really like putting stuff together with clean parts, whether it's a car or something like that. And this is gonna be a fun build. On my Crossfire XR, I plan on using the Razor Weld 45. I use the exact same plasma cutter on my Crossfire Pro, and I always said, as soon as the Razor Weld 45 dies, I'm buying myself a Hypertherm, and it never died, and it still works great right now as it's leaving my garage to, uh, to my buddy's garage. Anyway, let's take a look at the Razor Weld 45, this new one with the machine torch, and see how it's a little bit different. First off, visually, obviously, it is orange, so that's just a little bit visually different, but Here's just a word of caution if you're going to order one of these or you're like, I'll just go get one off of Amazon. I can find one, maybe save myself a couple bucks. Here's the problem. You need to make sure that your Razor Weld 45 says CNC Crossfire compatible on the side. Because if it isn't, then it might not have these two ports on the front and it might not give you these cables right here. One of them which turns on your, your torch and one which works the torch height control. That's what makes the whole Razor Weld 45 plug and play with the Crossfire XR or the Crossfire Pro and makes this thing such an awesome machine. Besides that, I spoke to the company and one of the problems that we had with the Crossfire Pro when we got those a long time ago is that the razor weld was misfiring. What they found out is that we had to change a resistor inside. They sent out a bulletin. They said, here's the fix. You can make this fix and make it work. And the, the thing worked perfect afterwards. It is all fixed. All those problems are fixed in this new machine that they're sending out with the Crossfire XR and also with the Crossfire Pros now. Some of the other things that you're going to get is the grounding cable, exactly the same as it was for the that we got it with the Crossfire Pro. And then something really cool is you go through the manual and you look at the consumables that you're gonna be using with this new machine torch. They are, just like on the Crossfire Pro, they are the Hypertherm 45 parts. So I usually go onto eBay and I buy these things in bulk. Like for example, as I take it apart the nozzle here and twist this thing off, you'll find that this is the electrode from the 45. Inside here is the nozzle from the 45, all these parts in the front 45, even the swirl cup, all those things easily replaceable and you can find them again on eBay is what I usually use. Okay, I always like to talk about facts and numbers. So let's talk about the price. How much does this thing cost to get it into your garage and working? For me, to get it to my shop here in San Diego, I paid $8,266 and that was for everything. That gets you a plasma cutter, that gets you a water table, torch head control, everything in your garage and working besides obviously having shop air. Uh, and when I had the Crossfire Pro, it was about $4,200 is what I paid to get it into my shop. So as you can see, the Crossfire Pro is a lot less money. And if you're saying to yourself, I, I don't need a huge table, I make small parts, then the Crossfire Pro is probably fine for you. We built an entire off-road race truck with the Crossfire Pro. And the last cut I made was better than the first cut I made with all the same equipment. So it is a good table. But the XR gives you that next level of production capability, the, a much more heavy duty machine, more than twice the cutting area. There's a lot of capability that you're getting for $8,266. What do I mean by that? Let me compare it to what I think is one of the premier other plasma table 
building companies. There's a ton of them out there now. We're just talking about Shop Saber. I'm not picking on them. I think they're a great table and an amazing option. Uh, but their prices are different. And let's, let's go ahead and take a look at that. The Sidekick 8, they considered this one of their entry level tables. It's about four inches wider than the XR, but about the same length at 98 inches. Um, and probably a lot of the same capabilities here and there, you know, they do some different things, but here's the bottom line. The starting price for that is $15,300 to start. I, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think this includes the plasma cutter. And I also don't think it includes, includes, includes a water table. I think that that's an add on. I might be wrong about that, but what I'm getting at, you can buy two crossfire XRs for the price of one sidekick eight. And that probably goes across the board for most of the other large names. You can buy two of the XRs for another brand table and double your production for the same price. I just don't think that you can beat the quality and the price that you're getting from Langmuir Systems. It is really just an amazing table and an amazing company. Okay, now that you've got your plasma table ordered and you're waiting for it, or you're just somebody who's interested in these plasma tables, well, where do you go to find information? And here's where I would start looking is first I would go to langmuirsystems.com, go over here to support, and you're going to find the best information. Scroll down to Crossfire XR. There's all kinds of stuff under support. You can learn how to use any of their things, their fire control, sheet cam, those kinds of things. But click on the XR assembly and check out their guide for how to put this thing together. What you'll find is that you can print this thing out and it's like over 120 pages. Pay attention to the date so you make sure you have the most updated assembly guide, especially if you've printed one out, you wanna check the date to make sure before you start building it. And then uh, embedded in here are some videos and that's why you'll need some internet. I'm not sure if you can download those videos. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to my iPad and you'll see on the iPad you have pretty much the same information. You can even print from here if you want. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go over and you see the up arrow in a box in the top right corner. I'm gonna click on that and then I'm gonna scroll over to books. And this is gonna generate a PDF and it's gonna put it onto my iPad in permanent storage. I will be able to use this even when I'm not logged in or I don't have internet, I'm on an airplane or something like that. So I can go through and just review the steps to building the, uh, the table. I've gone through it a little bit and there's, I just wanted to point out a few of the things I really like about their instructions. And here's just an example. Let me scroll down here and let's go to install rail mounts. And in each one of their sections, which are, are labeled in this one, in this case is labeled number eight. They start with a gray bar, which shows you all the things you're going to need. You know, as far as hardware, it says I need 14 of these socket head cap screws, and they're going to be in bag 27, like the bags I showed you once we open up the uh, the box in the way they do their labeling system, which is fantastic. And then as I look over to the next page, it goes, okay, here's a picture of this thing that I'm going to be putting together, but here are the nuggets of information. Besides the instructions on exactly how to do it, you see the important note, and it says, and this is so you don't have to take it apart later on and put it back together. It says the rail mount rear back plate looks uh, symmetric, but they're not there. You need to find this 90 degree angle corner. Well, what are they talking about? Here's the magic of having it on the iPad is that you can zoom in and you don't even need readers to read. There's okay. 90 degree corner here. Okay. This is a the part they're talking about that could be problematic. And now I see how they go together and I can zoom in and I look over here and I go, Oh, okay. This is the socket head cap screws and there it's in bag 27. This is what that screw looks like. This is exactly where they go. There's no doubt in my mind as to how that goes together. Let's take a look at one other uh, cool example over here, the install gantry uh, feature that are uh, instructions that they have. And again, they got under gray, they got the parts that you're gonna need, a little picture there. But here again, nugget of information, rail alignment. And they say the goal of the following rail alignment steps is twofold. And they tell you exactly what the goal is. There's no doubt as to what you're doing and what are the important steps here. And they also tell you the next page, how you can do this without damaging your table. And then all the steps to, to doing those things. And they lay it out perfectly. There's no doubt as to how you're supposed to put this table together. I built their Crossfire Pro also awesome instructions. And I really like this. And here is the, the really cool thing was, let's say you just, you don't get these instructions. Well, there are all kinds of resources out there. If you go back over to their web page and we'll click on forum, 
This is another great place to get information uh, if you're doing this, is go down to Crossfire XR. And right now there's not a ton of information in here, but you just watch as the tables are starting to be delivered and people are putting these together. There, there's no doubt gonna be some issues on a brand new rollout like this. There's gonna be something that people need to work, them, work through and the answers are gonna be here and there's gonna be really great information from the company and from other consumers that are just trying to you know help each other out. And then the other place that I would recommend you going to is checking out the Langmuir System Support Group on Facebook. And this is great. I think there's one or two other Langmuir System specific pages on Facebook. You can find all those. But as you scroll through here, if you have a problem, there's something wrong. And oh, there we go. The first delivery of the, uh, the XR, it is happening. This is really cool. But if you have a problem, you have all these great folks out there that are just totally willing to help you. Uh, it's a great community. And, uh, and I think that that is one of the things that, you know, as you're looking at, do I buy a Crossfire Pro? Do I buy an XR? Do I buy another co uh, company's uh, tables? I can't speak to those. But what I would do is look at their instructions, look at their community of users and see what they have to say and how they're working through problems. All plasma tables are going to have some issues, but I don't think that anything can beat the support that you're going to get from the other cons customers, either in their forums, the Facebook, uh, or from Langmuir Systems, who is really stepping up their game uh, with these new tables. All right, now for the fun part where I finally get to put the XR together and put this thing to work. And with that, if you have any questions about what's going on with the build, please add those to the comments. If you want to know dimensions, no matter what the question, I'll either answer it in the comments or I'll answer it on the next video, which I'm gonna to get to work on right now. I will also ask if you like the content, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Our team does have a goal. We're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers before the Baja 1000 that happens on the 18th. And you sure won't want to miss the content as we approach that race. It's really gonna start getting good. Well, I hope you'll choose to join us for that. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm gonna to try to get this next video out as soon as I can. Take care of yourself.